Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Rosenkia Lee, Fitness Universe Pro Bodybuilder and Fitness Wellbeing <laughs> and Nutrition <laughs> Coach. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so without further ado, Rosenkia, how did you how did you get into bodybuilding? Like where did that journey start? And then we'll talk about linking on into the raw foods, but I'm just curious, yeah, yeah where did yeah, your bodybuilding yeah, yeah. journey so, start? Yeah, for sure. Um I just wanna say that uh I'm pretty uh, open and authentic. So you gave me the list of questions. However, I didn't really, you know, study them. I was like, yeah, I'll just answer them honestly, truthfully. You don't have to rehearse the truth. So here we go. Um, let's see. Bodybuilding. I, I started, I got into it really from seeing my father working out. Um, he had taken me to his job and his job had like a, a gym and I was very, very young. I don't even remember how old I was, but I remember looking and I was like, what are those equipments? Like, what is that? And, um, he would also work out at home. So just seeing it around, it was around me, my dad, um, my brother, uh, being very athletic, um, my mom in terms of like endurance training, she would be running outdoors a lot or like walking outdoors a lot. And so it was, it was always pretty prevalent around me, right? Um, so uh, in terms of fitness and, and, you know, being aware of my physical health, um, but I got into actually, I guess, strength training um, when I was in high school, when I decided to rebel from uh, against my soccer coach at the time. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to play for you. Instead, I'm going to wrestle. And I was like the only female <laughs> on a all-male wrestling team. And they would be in the weight room, you know, training. And that was like my first experience really in a weight training, in a weight room experience in a gym with all these sweaty guys. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then just one thing after the other, um, kind of guide me along my path. But, uh, yeah, it's, I want to say it was kind of easy to get into. Um, I've always kind of had an interest, I guess. Um, uh, my brother, my older brother, I have two, um, and a sister, but my older brother was like, uh, you know what, Zenka, you look like one of those girls from the magazines, those muscle magazines. You, you could do that. And I was like, really? I was like, hmm. I thought about it. I was like, hmm, what is that? Um, but the opportunity came back in 2014 and all those things from my life came to my mind and, you know, not all at once, but gradually. And I was like, oh, this kind of makes sense. Yeah, I want to do it. And um, yeah, I just, I started and my first competition was in 2014. I did bikini and I had to lose some muscle mass. I was always told that I needed to lose muscle mass in different areas of my life, being a professional dancer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, so I was told I needed to lose some muscle mass. So I did that. That was quite challenging. And I was a carnivore. So I was eating meat. I was doing, you know, the standard uh, nutrition for bodybuilding. Uh, but then, and it was a great experience. It was great. It was new, right? It was a new endeavor. But then after that, I decided that... I wanted to do it my way. I was like, you know what? After this, I'm going to do it my way. And it's going to feel very natural for me. It's going to be as though if I choose to walk on stage, you know, tomorrow, I can because I'm doing the right things. It's a part of my lifestyle, right? And so, um, yeah. And uh, I guess the next competition kind of goes into me being raw vegan. <laughs> Because in 20, 2020, um, you know, six years later, I decided to compete again, you know, and I competed within the category of wellness. And uh, I decided that I wanted to do it raw vegan. And at that time, I had just uh, recently uh, been to school for um, holistic natural health and nutrition. And I stumbled across in one of my courses, uh, Dr. Graham. I'm doing this number because my library is on this side. But um, yeah, so I stumbled across his book, uh, The 80 10 10 uh, Diet. And I was like, this sounds really interesting. So I reached out to him. I, I just looked on the back of it. 
And I was like, I'm going to reach out to him. And I did. And he was so open and welcoming. And um, yeah, he guided me through that, my raw vegan experience, you know, the origin of my raw vegan experience. He guided me through that. So he's always been a mentor, even till this day. Um, yeah. Am I going too far? <laughs> no, no, that's perfect. That's okay. perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay. And yeah, don't worry, there'll be there'll be plenty of surprises. <laughs> okay. I just like to I just like to um send some guests uh like potential topics just so they're not like completely taken by surprise. Okay. But no. I normally I normally go off the cuff midway through. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Very but yeah, cool. <laughs> in terms of like bodybuilding, um a lot of people they think bodybuilding is just like, you know, these two hundred and something pound guys on stage. But like what if anyone doesn't know, what are like the different categories and things of bodybuilding and kind of where where are you sitting now? Like what what category? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started in bikini and then I went to wellness and then I went to fitness. So okay, so in the female categories, uh and it also depends on the federation too. It depends on the federation. Um, yeah, natural federations or the MPC or the IFBB, like it, it all depends. Or IFFB, it just depends. Um, but generally, you have bikini, uh, you have wellness, you have figure, you have fitness, you have physique, women's physique, and then you have women's bodybuilding. Yeah, I believe I covered them all. Mm -hmm. So for me, I never did figure. I just went from the beginning, which was a softer look bikini, which is safe when you're, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of safer. Also depends on how much time you have to prepare for that show. Um, for me, I only had a, I think I had two months. So I had two months to prepare for my first show. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, but I did it. I do things like that, right? Um, so I didn't have a lot of time, but... So because of that, it was easier and I was already in like good physical like conditioning, um, you know, fitness conditioning. So my coach at the time was like, yeah, just do bikini. I'm like, okay, cool. So I did that. And then when I did it again, I did wellness and I had uh, naturally I carry, I have more of a muscular, you know, mass down below. Most, most women kind of do. And so it just fit more naturally for me to do wellness. Um, and then after that, I was like, mm, I want to go a little bit deeper. I want to challenge myself. And so I went into fitness, which is all of it. You have to have the physique. You have to have um, uh, a routine, like an acrobatic or whatever talent, usually in the acrobatic type category, um, genre, routine. So you have to be like conditioned and you have to have the, the muscularity physique along with it. It's it's quite demanding, but it was, I like challenges. So I was like, right, I'm going to do it. So I did it. It was very intriguing to me. Um, and it's actually dying down. You're not finding a lot of fitness, um, that category in a lot of federations, mainly because it's not as popular. Um, it's not as popular, but I'm, I'm trusting that it will get more of a hype and people begin to, um, you know, compete in that category again, because it's a fun, it's a fun category. It's, it is challenging because you have to condition and train in more than one way. You know what I mean? So, mm. um, but yeah, so that's that. So you have bikini, you have figure, you have wellness, you have fitness, you have women's physique and you have women's bodybuilding. Mm. Yeah, it definitely sounds more fun than what most people would like think of as like traditional bodybuilding, just stand on stage and pose. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 so, right. Yeah. So what's like your routine or your like what what goes alongside it? What what yeah. Yeah. When for you're fitness. on stage. Yeah. For for, okay, yeah. So let's see. So I still had my strength training um regimen. Of course I had my nutritional regimen, but then I also had to choreograph a routine. So um, I choreographed it for myself. The very first one I did, I actually reached out to Oksana. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar. With oh my gosh. I reached out to Oksana. Um, she's amazing. She's what, four or six time uh, Olympian. 
um, Olympia winner in fitness. Four or four, wow. six time Olympia winner. She I'll is, take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah, she is. She's amazing. But I reached out to her and I was like, listen, I need some help with, uh, you know, routine. And uh, she just, I did some movement. And she gave me some things to, to try and I tried them. And she was like, okay, well, um, you do this well, so do that. And I was like, okay. So I kind of followed her guide there. And then I developed my own chore choreography. So um, I just did what worked more naturally for me. Um, I have a dance background. So I, I incorporated some uh, contemporary dance movements in there. Of course, the, the strength, the, the how can I say, the tricks that they like to see. Um, I incorporated that, you know, the awe factor. Um, what else? And that's pretty much it. You just you're just doing your thing. You're you're showing off your talent and your physique through movement, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Mm. So that's what that looked like. So I worked on my choreography, worked on my nutrition, and train, train, train like all the time. <laughs> yes. Every day, yeah. maybe about three hours, three hours wow. a day, uh, six days a week. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, some ser serious dedication, but I'm sure you enjoy it. So I'm sure it makes it more, yeah, it makes it, it more fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, but so so just on the like the raw vegan diet, um, a lot of people they think like <laughs> vegan's bad enough. Um, let alone raw vegan, they think like you know without all these grams of protein, you're gonna just kind of waste away. Um, but what what benefits did you notice uh, when you went raw? So you 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 were vegan a few years prior, weren't you? And then yes, okay. I'm looking at you like that because I'm like, let's get into it. All right. So the very first thing that I noticed was my emotional poise. I was I had more of a, a more of a well-being. I felt more centered. Um, again, back in 2014, I didn't have that. I had a lot of, you know, what do you call it? Hangry moments. You know, I was hungry and angry at the same time. I wasn't doing a lot of carbohydrates, so. You know, I wasn't, you know, satiated in that way. Um, and of course, carbs can be emotionally numbing. You know, all these things, I didn't, I didn't. So anyway, when I went raw, I felt more at ease with myself, with things around me. I just had that emotional poise, which I really, really loved. And it's, I think that's a part of your health. I know it is. Um, that was the very first thing that I noticed because when you are, when you are bodybuilding, you're not the happiest camper. Mm. You're, you're not. <laughs> so I was happy. So I noticed that I was happy. I was having a good time. I was enjoying the process. And I didn't really enjoy it the first. I didn't enjoy it the first time. But the second time and then the third time and so forth, I enjoyed it. So that was the first thing that I noticed. Um, my mental and emotional well-being is number one for me. So yeah, that was the first thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I think I'm sure you can agree. You've probably seen it firsthand. Like all these bodybuilders, like starving themselves and really miserable, and like you say, hangry. Okay, we'll jump back in because the right, the hangry cool. the hangry bodybuilders they were obviously yes. calling you. The competitors were <laughs> calling you up. Yeah, but yeah. Um. So yeah, I was just saying about like uh the conception and the stereotype of like bodybuilders being really like hangry and miserable and starving. Yeah. Um, so for you, has it been like more enjoyable being like a, a bodybuilder with this lifestyle? It has been more enjoyable. Um, I will say that towards um, peak week. So that's the week of your show. You do have to scale, but even being raw vegan, I still have to scale back a bit in my nutrition, tailor it in a little bit in my nutrition um, just for that week, like the week of my show. But before that, prior to that, like it's, and even in doing that, it's still not horrible. Like I'm still able to enjoy myself and have a good balance, like emotional, you know, poise. Um, but it's enjoyable. I will say that uh, competing, well, it doesn't matter the federation. I'll just, I'll just say this, that I noticed the difference behind stage you know, in terms of my emotional well-being, like I was, some of the girls were really, they're really nice. They're, some of them weren't, you know, they're in their head, they're in the zone and I get that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a sport. 
So they were in their mind, in their zone. I get that. And some were just more social. You know, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, I can't wait to have, you know, my pizza. And I can't wait to have my cupcakes. And I can't wait. Oh, man, it's been up. You know, they would, they would just share their stories, you know. And it was great. But in, in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I'm having that. I'm not having that. But I'm enjoying myself already right now. I just had pineapples before I got here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying myself. Um, so it those differences. And I, I think um, I know that it makes a big difference. I, I don't think that it, it needs to be sacrificed. I don't think that your emotional or mental um, well-being should be sacrificed in any situation. Mm. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Just politely jumping in to share that if you want my exact workout routine that took me from 130 pounds after a lot of cleansing and fasting to 156 pounds over the course of about six months now, then you can find that top link in the description and that's completely free. But anyway, enjoy the rest of the conversation. Peace and love. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Um, and in terms of like the physical side, like, have you noticed your recoveries improve? Because I know um, like when I go raw, like fully raw days, my recovery is just like, yeah uh, off the charts so have you experienced that i have i really really have um i still need my rest though i still have to get my rest in mm -hmm. um for sure but uh, accompanied with the rest yeah for sure like and i still need my hot bath i'm just gonna tell it to you because you're you're training really hard so you know you can't just go to bed and be like oh i'm ready you still have to take hot baths and do the extras but in essence yeah it's my recovery is a lot quicker in comparison to when i was not being raw vegan or just being vegan you know what i mean however i wasn't training i never trained simply being vegan it was carnivore and then raw vegan <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that that was my journey. But yeah, I have noticed a recover a difference in my recovery. Mm. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And yeah. in terms of like your training routine, um, what does that change? So like, does that change depending on how close you're coming up to competition? Will you then kind of like, or do you carry on training hard? And like, yeah, so <laughs> maybe just give like uh, everyone an idea of like your typical kind of routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say you're training the hardest before because you have to think about when you're leading up to peak week you're more so focused on your body um healing i would say your body healing and really taking on or how can i say catching up with all of the training that you did prior so it's, it's not so much focus on going as hard leading up to peak week but the weeks before for sure, you're, you're training as hard because you know you can't go as hard, you know, that two to a week before, two, one week to two weeks before, you can't. Um, some people try, and then that's when you have, like, injuries and that sort of thing. Um, and you don't want that. You want to always be smart about, about your regimen and be smart about your training um, and what you're doing. You should try, and all of that really deals with your ego, so you have to, and again, if you're not emotionally and mentally balanced, your ego can get in the way and you may want to do a little extra and then get an injury and, and that's not good. But anyway, I'm just saying full circle back to, <laughs> but yeah, so um, it does change. It does change. You're not going as hard the whole way. No. Mm. Yeah. But do you have like a typical split, like a workout split you stick to? Um, every four weeks, it would change so mm -hmm. it's not it's not the same and again it, it all depends on what it is i'm trying to um to build it all depends on what my body is showing me so say you know one set of four weeks or one month um you know my shoulders are looking really good uh i like to focus it's, fitness is all over i have to work on my entire body my shoulders are looking good my back etc but yet my legs still needs to, i need to you know tune in a bit more with my legs so I may focus a bit more on that um, in the next set of my four week training. You know, it, it just depends on what your body, how your body is responding and what you see. So it's a constant, you know, I, nowadays people are doing selfies, you know, all the time. But when you're bodybuilding, you're doing selfies because you're actually analyzing your body to see, okay, what do I need to work on? So it's a bit different. It's for, it's intentional. 
well, I guess other people doing selfies are intentional too. But the intention is different. <laughs> mm. The intention is different. It's different. It's because you want to win. You want to you wanna beat, how can I say, you want to be your better self and beat the self that you were the last time you were on stage. You know what I mean? So you're, you're in competition with yourself. And it's like um, when you're on stage, it's 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 really hard because number one, you you you're not really sure of who the judges are going to be, and each judge has a certain criteria that you may not be aware of, and so and and you don't know who's going to show up that may fit that criteria of that of those judges, right? So it's just it's like it's like you're gambling. You're just really that's why it's best just to focus on yourself, and you know try to be the best you try to be better and that's just it and then show up as that better version of yourself than you know the last competition and then that's it that's all you have and then that's really that's all that, that it takes that's all you need <laughs> but yeah um which is why i love i love the sport um because of that it does encourage just self self-improvement self-development in a lot of ways more than physical but yeah mm. Yeah. absolutely yeah you just got to focus on what you can control and then everything else that's outside of your control and you just yeah you just hope you get good fortune but yeah if you put in the hard work then i'm sure like i'm sure the results come right and and how do you like fuel that training so like um people are probably curious because obviously compared to a lot of mainstream diets like a raw vegan diet is like really extreme so what, what does like a typical day of eating look like Listen, I, you were talking about the protein aspect. Oh, yeah. Um, when I say I, you know, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. It was just, I just didn't think about it. You know, I had a really good coach um, going in and he was just like, it will take care of itself. Just do what you need to do and it will take care of itself. And it pretty much did. I did well. Um, I focused on, I focused on high water content or high water concentrated fruits. Um, mm. At the beginning, before that, I was focusing on the more dense fruits, higher in sugars, um, because I just needed because I was working out so hard, I needed to fuel that right. And so um, as as the show day approached, then my carbs the the type of carbs changed but that was it i i didn't really do any vegetables to be honest i i was mainly fruitarian <laughs> which was great i enjoyed it i enjoyed it so um yeah i was mainly fruitarian and um i guess that's why i was so happy all the serotonin going on mm. but i was i was just enjoying enjoying the ride but that was it. It was mainly dense fruits, and then it changed a little bit to more water content fruits, and then that changed a little bit more. Just kept getting more and more tailored as the show week approached. But yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And do you like? Tr obviously, I, I assume you like track all your calories and macros and things just to. No, I didn't do any of that. No. That's nonsense. No. Nonsense. I didn't do any of that. I mean, okay, I'm not gonna say it's nonsense. It it serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. It serves a purpose. It just didn't serve my purpose. So I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cool. It just didn't serve my purpose. So, mm -hmm. so I assume like you have a, a weight class or a weight uh, yeah, that you compete in. Um, how did you like make sure you got to that specific weight yeah. uh, without tracking? Is it all just intuition? So here's another thing. Again, the Federation or the show itself has a different criteria. Um, the shows I did, the weight didn't matter. It was more height. Oh, okay. It was height and age. Um, the weight didn't matter. Again, it just depends on the, the show. Um, yeah, depends what they're mm -hmm. what they want. Again, 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 and that's another thing you may not find out. Oh, that's what they're looking for, and then you may have to tailor some things to your training mm -hmm. to abide by that. So you know, it's one mm -hmm. of those things. <laughs> Yeah. How much? How much notice do they give you? Like, how do you know? How far in advance do you know? Like, who the judges are going to be and what their criteria is? Is it quite short notice? Yeah, it's like surprise. But like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just go with it. You just go with it. You just go with it. 
it. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that's that's another thing. It's like, and you try not to have like anxiety or freak out or anything. Um, and that's why your emotional health is important. You know what I mean? Oh, it just is. But um, you no, know, we don't have. Usually, there isn't. There's word of who could be judging, but you don't really know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know in the past, um, I heard on like a past interview that you were doing like one meal a day mm-hmm. and then two meals a day. So wh- where are you currently sitting at now? The same. Um, if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> so uh, I kind of still do the same thing. Um, one meal a day. Let me think. Yesterday I did twice. It just depends on the needs of my day, like how demanding my day is. Mm. Um, I prefer one meal a day because it's just, I just like it. I'm used to it. Um, But the two meal a day, two meals a day is fine as well. They're just not large meals. They're just smaller meals that I'll have, depending upon, I would say, um, my higher activity level. So if I am like teaching a, a few classes that, takes a lot of energy out of me then definitely going to fuel up for that trip right and then i'm going to fuel up again for my workout so that's pretty much how i like to go about it is whatever the highest level of activity that i'm doing i like to fuel up for those things Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and do you manage to get do you feel like it's fine to get in enough calories in just one meal because i know um, a lot of people when they transition like because it's so high volume they can't they need to split it up. Um, at the start, was it like a lot more meals? And then you've kind of worked towards this? Yeah, it was a process because you have to figure out your body. You have to figure out your your needs and then, mm-hmm. you know, your schedule and that sort of thing. So it is a process. And I tell everyone just to be patient with yourself. Like, number one, I would say just the one word that comes to my mind is love. You have to love on yourself. <clears throat> Love is patient, so be patient with yourself. The food that you're eating is loving you. Love on yourself. So mm. why are you being anything outside of that? Just follow the follow the road of love. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with the journey. Be patient with the process. Just be patient. And, you know, in a, I live in the U.S., obviously. In our society, everything is, you know, convenience and fast pace and you know boom 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 quickness quick quickness but i say you know everything can serve a purpose yes again you just need to know what your purpose is you need to know what works best for you you need to know you and you need to be patient with yourself and figure it out if that's what you want to do whatever you want to do just be patient with yourself so yeah that's what i say same thing with uh, it doesn't change same thing with being you know raw vegan just be patient with the journey because you can't speed it up where are you going just take your time (laughs) but anyway yeah i would say just take your time be patient um it took me a little while to figure it out and then you you have different outside factors that changes like just life life you know has change change you have to welcome change change is a part of life so just be patient with the change don't try to you know jump too quickly when you need to be still but anyway that's my advice on that part (laughs) (laughs) yeah so so what (laughs) yeah (laughs) what is like a typical uh what's like one of your favorite meals or like a typical meal is it like a mono meal or do you do you combine because i know um you said you've been working with Dr. Graham, who for yeah. anyone who doesn't know, he's like the author of the 80-10-10 diet. And I think he's been doing this raw vegan diet for like 45 years or something. It's it's something a, like that. It's been a yeah. minute. I think yeah. he was, oh, he's 74 yeah, he's... or 72. Don't quote me. Dr. D, he's in his 70s. I know that. Yeah, definitely. And he's in his 70s, uh, early 70s. And I think he's been doing it. And he looks great. I think he's been doing it. Maybe about 40, 45 years, perhaps. Mm. And he's still competing as well. I think like powerlifting or something. Yeah, something yeah like he that. does yeah. powerlifting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in terms of your like meals or structure, um, like favorite meals, what what would that look like? Just if someone's a bit confused, like what a raw vegan diet looks like? Yeah. 
it just depends but i will tell you i love i love grapes i love cucumbers i love cucumbers um again i love simplicity um i love uh cherries um what did i have the other day yesterday i had mangoes um uh, and i had cucumbers um i love i love everything blueberries um but i guess my my go-to, I love plums, because it's right now it's like plum season still. So I've been enjoying that. Um, watermelon. Ah, oh, I love watermelon. Mm. That's that's one of my favorites. It's out of season now. It's slowly going out of season now. Um, where I'm at, where, what else do I enjoy? I mean, I love a lot of the stuff that's in season. Grapes, you can always get grapes like around the year. So I, I do that all the time. Um, that's my that's my go to if there's nothing really available for me that I that I really want. That's my go to is, is grapes. Um, pineapples. I love pineapples. Um, and then another thing is another good trick is um, frozen fruit. You know, frozen fruit is always a typically always available. So you can, some people don't do it, but I like to take my fruit, my frozen fruit, and I thaw it out and I eat it as is. Like I don't have to make a, I don't have to make anything out of it. I just thaw it and then I eat it and I enjoy it. And I really, really enjoy it. So I do that. Um, and then that's another thing. Like if you're eating according to the season, it's a good thing to freeze whatever that's in season before it goes out and then you can you know always take it out later and thaw it out and eat it or make it into a smoothie whatever it is so that's another good thing too um i would recommend doing is freezing your fruit um yeah and i wouldn't really freeze the vegetables too much unless you're making like some type of soup dish letting it come to like a room temperature um letting it come to room temperature to use it i wouldn't really i don't freeze my vegetables i more so freeze my fruits i mean my veg vegetables i can get easy but fruit i like to freeze those mm -hmm. but anywho I, yeah 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 so do you like uh, occasionally include like vegetables and like how about like nuts and seeds how do you feel about them um i think they're cool i think they're cool i don't do a lot of them um but again you have to keep in mind that um when I first embarked upon raw veganism, that was my way. I didn't do season nuts. I didn't do it. So because that was what I practiced consistency, you know, I, I don't do it. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with them. It's just not what I do. Um, at least not on the regular. If I do like seeds or nuts, it's going to be like a out of the blue like once i don't know maybe once a month or whatever i don't think about it that's the thing like people like oh so how often are you rotating your fats i don't know i'm not thinking about it i just do it whenever i can tell you that it's not frequent it's not you know often um mm -hmm. i just kind of go with it and, and if i am doing the caesar nuts and i definitely incorporate you know lots of dark leafy greens um uh, lots of vegetables along with it yeah i don't combine my fruit and, and nuts or, or seeds and nuts. I don't do that. Mm, yeah, definitely. And is that the, the nuts and seeds? Um, is that because like you don't feel as good or you don't look as good with them? Because for me personally, like obviously they're higher in fat. So, you know, they just make me feel a bit more sluggish if I, if I have like too many of them. Uh, so yeah, is that your kind of reason why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're a, a bit, they're not as easy to digest, which is yeah. why you do get that, you know, affect the sleepiness a bit. Um, and I, you know, I'm alive to be alive. So I want to feel vitality. You know what I mean? So I don't, I'm, I, that's just how I think. That's just how I think. I want to enjoy life. Don't get me wrong. You can enjoy life eating seeds and nuts. Sure. Yeah. But I know how my body feels and I know how it feels at its best. And I yeah. want it to feel at its best all the time. You know what I mean? That's just Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't really do a lot of them, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. If you're going to do them, you can maybe do them midday or depends on what they are. If they're a leaner fat, like walnuts or something like that, you can do them midday. They won't really give you that sluggish feeling, um, as much, um, or at night. So midday or at night, 
Um, yeah, pretty much it. If you're going to do pumpkin seeds, they're higher in, in carbs. I would do those like midday um, because you can utilize those carbs, right? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I wouldn't do a lot of them at night. If you're going to eat a lot of fats, or if you're going to eat fats, I wouldn't just do a whole lot of it because what do you, how are you utilizing those fats? You're just sleeping? You're going to eat them and then go to sleep? And then what? Hibernate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> and don't get me wrong. You can't become obese by eating. You can gain weight. Facts. You can still gain weight um, by eating, you know, lots of fats, um, even if it's seeds and nuts. But, you know, I have a certain physique that I, I aim for and it just doesn't align with my, my personal goals. Yeah. Exactly. I think I think that's so important. Like people get clear on their goals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's good. Who who doesn't want to live like life? You know, fun, energetically. Like, um, I think a lot of people they they think like when they go on this lifestyle, the the social side of things is really going to suffer. Um, yeah. How have you found that? Have you are you still able to socialize or like, yeah? Do you have any tips for people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't really care about what other people think. So, <laughs> because it's my world. I do what I want. It's my world. You all, we all live in our own worlds, right? Anyway, I don't really care what other people think personally. So I can go out and um, I'll, usually I'll eat before I go out. Or if not, um, I'll just ask just to feel like I'm partaking in what they're partaking in, whatever. I'll ask the, uh, the waiter or waitress for specific things. Like, it's good not to focus on what you don't want, but know what you want. Most restaurants, they're going to have lettuce, they're going to have onions, they're going to have tomatoes. Um, they may have cu cucumbers. Usually they have cucumbers. They may have avocados. So I would say look at the menu beforehand. See what common uh, vegetables or fruits that are on the menu and then decide which ones you want. Once you get there, say, oh, this is what I want for you to do for me. Can you give me a huge bowl of lettuce and tomatoes and onions and, and cucumbers, avocados if you have them? Boom. That's what you do. That's just it. You make it really, really simple. They may say, oh, do you want dressings? I just want a bowl of lettuce and tomatoes and cucumbers, onions. You know what I mean? You just make it really, really simple for them. Because if not, they're gonna get it they're gonna get it wrong. And even if they mm -hmm. still get it wrong, it's okay because you're not like over the phone or whatever, you're in person, so you can tell them about how to make the correction. But it's you know, you can you can make it simple, you can do it. Again, what's important is knowing what your goals are. And a lot of people aren't clear on what their goal is and you know, they're confused because of you know inputs from you know their friends and you know all this information from outside sources you just need to know your why it's important to know your why and that's it once you understand your foundation then you can build on that but yeah mm. Mm -hmm. definitely yeah and if someone does know their why and then they want to be the best version of themselves maybe right. they they know like um you know, they want to get in shape. They know they'll feel better. They'll look better. Maybe they'll inspire others. Do you have mm -hmm. like any tips for, for them? Like, um, yeah, where to get started? I would say, I tell people this, like, cause I get inquiries often and they're like, Oh, well, I'm trying to figure out this and that. And for me, um, I get inquiries from people that want to embark upon, uh, being raw vegan and, and did it freeze? Uh, yeah, we just lost you for a second, but it's okay. Good. It's You're because right. I'm I'm a real person, all right. So I'm gonna charge up my phone right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Boom. I'm just keeping it that. real, keeping it real. We're back. We're back. Okay. So what I was saying was, um, I get increased from different types of people that are on different paths, and some of them are carnivores that they know that they need to make a change, and so they're reaching out, trying to figure out. They don't know how, but they know they need to make some type of change, so they're reaching out. And then I just meet them where they are and I just say, okay, well, why do you need to make this change? What are you willing to change to make the change? What do you, and I'm not going to say the word sacrifice. I say, what are you willing to change to make the change? Keep it simple. 
um, people that want that have been thinking about being raw vegan again I just meet them where they are so okay well what is your why what is it you're trying to accomplish why do you want to accomplish this you know um, and I just I ask them these questions because that's important before they start any program any regimen if if they can't commit to themselves, they're not going to commit to the regimen, period. So I'm like, you got to commit to your why, know why you're doing it. And then I know I'll, I can have faith that you can commit to the program. But, um, yeah, so I would say just, you got people, people are so far, far removed and detached from the essence of themselves. And so I would say, get to know you. Get to know yourself, get to know your ambitions, get to know all these things. And then, you know, once you figure that out in the, the curiosity of being raw vegan or the curiosity of changing your, your workouts or, you know, your meal plans and whatever capacity, then you can start to find your answers because you've identified the, the you know, the main thing, the, the foundation, you know what I mean? So I would say just get to know you, get to know why you're, why you're wanting to, why are you seeking this thing? Why are you seeking it? Uh, and then after that, um, make, make steps, just start making, just start, just start, just start. And again, you might come across some, you will come across some challenges, you will, but those challenges won't last because again, you're connected to your wife. So I would, that's the number, that's my, my number one suggestion, my advice, know you, know your why, that's it. No one else can answer that but yourself. And then mm. make steps and don't stop. Make steps, mm. don't stop, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. yeah, great advice. And do you think like if people just, even, even if they had like a fruit breakfast, do you feel like a lot of people would get benefit from that? Like, is that a recommendation you make for, for like all your yeah. clients? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's always, even if you're eating like cooked foods or whatever it is, it's good to have something of water content mm. before eating the concentrated food. So yeah, fruit before your other meals, definitely. I would recommend doing that. It's getting that your digestive system is waking it up to say, okay, something's being introduced to us. We can assimilate it you know, we're good. Mm. We're good. So you want to, you know, again, be loving, be kind to yourself and not be so forceful. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And talking about like digestion, um, when I went raw, like when I transitioned, I noticed like no gas, no bloating, like perfect digestion. Um, yeah. Just like I, I thought gas and bloating was kind of normal. Um, have you experienced like benefits with the digestion? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a female, so I get, you know, I call it my aunt. She comes around every once a month. <laughs> so, you know, my aunt comes and when she comes to visit, it's an easy visit. Like, it's no preparation for her. You know, there's no, you know, anticipation for her. She just comes. Sometimes she pops up. And I don't even expect her to come. And I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> but yeah. That's a rude aunt. <laughs> yeah, you know, she just comes. I'm like, okay, hi. But um, yeah, it's, I, I definitely noticed a difference of my digestion, bloating around that time of the month for me. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I, I just, I don't like, how can I say? If I can be in control of my comfort level, I want to make sure I'm comfortable. Now, uh, what I mean by that is there are going to be moments, and again, I'm, I'm a holistic person, so I, I dial in everything all together. There's going to be moments where, you know, you feel uncomfortable, especially when you're like um, trying something new, right? You're trying something new. You're out of your comfort zone. Those things I recommend. Get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. Try because you're stretching yourself. You're growing. And when it comes to my body and my digestion, mm -mm. I like it to be comfortable. I like it to feel happy. I want it to work for me. I like to feel good in my body. I don't like dis-ease in my body. I like to feel good. And so because of that, um, 
yeah, like I just, that's just what I like. So I, I, I've noticed a difference in it being raw and I just feel, I just feel good. <laughs> I just feel good. And I'm, I'm not saying this because, you know, I have some alternative motive to say this. I'm just living my life and telling you my truth. I, I feel good. And I, I like the way my digestion feels. Mm. Yeah. And that's yeah, that's the thing. Once you, if you're sharing your personal experience, no one can like argue with that. It's it's your truth. Um, it's the same here. Like I just try and share like what I've experienced um, yeah. on the on the lifestyle, and you know people can doubt it if they want. But I think it's for everyone to experience and just yeah. see how that how they get on. Um, I agree. Have you know, I... yeah, yeah. I was just gonna ask you if you've noticed. Um, you talked about like disease, uh, disease and illness and things. Um, have you got sick on this lifestyle at all, or have you been I haven't. So, you know, thankfully, I'm very happy. Uh, I've just, I've always been very uh, health conscious. Uh, growing up, I've always been healthy. Well, that's a whole nother story. I don't think we have the time for that. But growing up, I've always been very health conscious, right? And so, um, yeah, I would do things that would be kind of weird for like my family or my friends. And they'd be like, why are you eating like that? And I just, I've just, I, how can I say, just been in tune and connected with myself to know what decisions to, to make and to take. So, um, so I haven't, I mean, I've had colds before, um, growing up, I've had the flu before, so, you know, stuff like that, but like chronic diseases and ailments I have not experienced and I'm very thankful for. I, that wasn't my why for em embarking upon the raw vegan lifestyle. That wasn't my why. Um, my why was just, I like challenges and I wanted to do something different and I, it excited me and I was like, let's do it. Uh, that was my why. Um, but no, I haven't experienced, actually, I've, I can say that my body is very sensitive. And what I mean by that is because it's so clean if something is like not right, like in what I mean by that is say if someone has a cold and, you know, I'm feeling great. And then, uh, I don't know, they cough or they sneeze or whatnot. And then I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I, I might get something from them temporarily, but I would know, okay, it's from that. And it's easier to, how can I say that your process of elimination is mm, more clear. Detox, yeah. Yes, you can you know, eliminate, oh, this is why this is that, or this is why I'm feeling like that. It's easier to identify what's not right with you when you're eating very clean and very pure, if that makes sense. You know, yeah. when you're not eating, you're eating whatever, and you start to get sick, you're like, okay, well, what is it coming from? You don't know where it's coming from because you have all these different factors. But when you can narrow in what you're eating, it's easier to figure out this is could be why i'm not feeling well you know what i mean which is good which is good so yeah yeah mm -hmm. yes yeah, it's, it's a blessing and a curse but it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's very positive in my mind in my mind it's positive like it's just because like you say you just eliminate any toxins really quickly um right, but right. then yeah sometimes people be like oh you've got a runny nose but it's just because you ate something a little bit Back, like out the norm and your body's uh -huh. just just eliminating it um, letting you know right right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um <laughs> <In a curse. laughs> you like that one <laughs> that's funny but yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah um just i just got a thought on like supplements um what's your approach to supplements do you like supplement at all i don't okay so let me ask you this so i do um like organic uh, herbal powders, like, or um, just herbs, say like ginger powder or like cayenne pie powder. Mm -hmm. Would you consider that supplementation? Uh, no, probably, probably not. No. I, I don't know what the definition is, but in my mind, like most people think like um, vitamin B12, vitamin D. Okay, iodine, so stuff like that, like that, I don't, I don't worry about that. Um, I've been fortunate enough not to worry about it. Again, some people who are on this path, because their bodies were compromised beforehand, they yeah. have to do alternative things to get their bodies back acclimated to where it needs to be. So, you know, I again, you everyone has their own, they have their own path. 
So I won't, and I'm not going to knock it if that's what people are doing. Um, you just got to know where you are. You got to know where you are. You got to know your body and know what's best for you. Make the best choice for you. Boom. For me, I don't have the need to do it. So I don't do it. Um, I, no, I don't do it. I, yeah, I'm very, very simple. I'm very, very simple. But even with the cayenne or like ginger powder, I just kind of dry scoop it. <laughs> I just put it in and drink some water behind it. Um, that's like a, a kind of like a pre-workout for me, if you will. And it works really mm. great. You could try it. Yeah. <laughs> you could try oh, it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be breathing fire in the gym. but <laughs> <laughs> Breathing fire. Listen, the ginger kind of make mm. it, it kind of counterbalances the the spice from the cayenne pepper so yeah you might want to do that it might help just saying yeah Get a little extra <laughs> that's my thing cool mm -hmm. uh-huh yeah so if you want we'll dive into some uh rapid fire questions to, yeah. to close um awesome just pull them up Okay, so I assume you know what a rapid fire question is, but just try answer as quickly as you can. But obviously, if you need to take time, um, feel free to elaborate. Okay. Okay, so what's your favorite fruit? Favorite fruit, mango. Mm, nice. Okay. <laughs> Describe yourself in one word. Disciplined. Mm, yeah, I think that's clear. Uh, what's one book that everyone needs to read? 80 Tents and Diet by dr graham yeah i agree uh what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received i've ever received hmm. oh i need a little time for this one best oh well it wasn't really advice my mom told me this and i it stays with me to this day she said to me, it was something that i had done and i was very upset about it and she was like well i can wait can you so be patient. And I was like, mm. I can wait too. But yeah, she was like, I can wait. Can you? I'm like, okay, I guess I have to wait. So be patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we could all do with a bit of patience sometimes. <laughs> be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, what are three things that you can't live without? Mm. Sunlight, <laughs> meditation, and good food. <laughs> Those, yeah, sunlight, meditation, good food. Yeah. Mm. Because in essence, I, I love being around people, but I don't have to be. Like, I, I find, you know, peace and happiness and joy in myself. I can entertain myself. Sounds kind of crazy, but I can. I can have a good time just by myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What's your greatest strength and what's your biggest weakness? Greatest strength, um, again, I would say discipline. I'm very focused. I, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, weakness? Well, I think before it used to be procrastination. I would procrastinate like crazy. Um, but I think, how can I say? I believe our words are very powerful. I believe our words are affirmations. So I don't have a weakness. But instead, I've brought awareness to the mm -hmm. things that I want to strengthen. So because of that awareness, I have strengthened that area, that characteristic. And I'm able to identify it the minute that I feel it or there's a sensation. I'm like, oh, change direction. May have a different thought. So because of that, it's now a strength. Now I'm even more disciplined because I can identify when I'm feeling or I have the idea of procrastination. I'm like, oh, boom, boom, change my thought, change my thought, change my thought. So that's just it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> Do you believe in having a purpose? If so, what's your purpose in life? Yeah, so I believe... Everybody has a purpose. So I believe my purpose is just to be a good example for me, for myself first, right? Um, I believe my purpose is to be uh, be positive, be uh, optimistic, be enthusiastic, um, be faithful to 
my goals, my desires. I believe my purpose is to live out my truths. And by me doing that, it can show other people that they too can live out their truths, that they too can identify what their passions are, that they too can be happy, that they too can live a fulfilling life, that they too can have peace, that they too can have joy, that they too can have all of these things by changing their minds and by uh, having uh, being very, very conscious because consciousness is, everything has a consciousness, right? So I think by me being that example and living my life, living my truth, my purpose is to show other people that they can do the same thing. Yeah. Which is why, you know, being raw vegan, I wanted to do it so that I can say, okay, I'm the example. You can do it too. I just believe that, you know, we should be living our best, our best lives. We should be having the best experience that we can possibly have on this planet. I believe that. And it doesn't have to come from an outside source. You can be living your best life by, again, transforming you, transforming yourself and changing your perspective on the outside, changing your perspective of what you see, what's going on around you. And just by doing that, you can have so much more joy and you can enjoy this life a lot more when you can learn how to change your perspective. Everything is perspective. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, anyway. Absolutely. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um finally, what are you grateful for today? Mm, well, I am grateful for this opportunity to get to meet you and to connect with you and because this has never happened before. So I'm grateful for this. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my story and to connect with all the many viewers out there and to, uh, you know, just to be me and encourage other people to be themselves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Likewise. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, yeah. Where can people find you? What have you got going on? Cause I know you've got a lot of different things. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where can people get in touch? For sure. Um, so they can reach out through, um, Instagram. Rosenka Lee, um, at Rosenka Lee, they can reach out to me by Facebook, uh, Rosenka Lee Living. Um, same thing with YouTube, Rosenka Lee. Um, yeah, I try to make it really simple so it's easy to find me. Not a lot of people have my name, so it should be easy to find me. <laughs> so yes, Rosenka Lee. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Or if you want to email me, if you have questions, you can email me at um, Zinkalee at gmail.com. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put that all in the description. I'm sorry. Zinkalee. So take off the R-E and it's just zinkalee at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. I'll put them okay. all in the description. Oh, as well, perfect, so. perfect. But yeah, yeah, appreciate your time and I appreciate the viewers for listening this far, if, especially if they made it this far. Ah, very <laughs> and good. Yes, hope everyone has a blessed day. Peace and love, everyone. Peace and love. Thank you.